Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, this is going to be part two of the Hypercube build. So far we got some of the work done. Got three of the legs up. Uh, you can kind of see two of them and then you can see the... I believe this is the Y-axis. I have a dry line bearing on there. I'm going to try to put all the dry line bearings on the top and uh, just regular linear bearings on the vertical axis. It should be okay. Um, got one more leg to install. So that's to the side. What I'm going to try to do is put the other Y axis. Let me double check. Yes, the other Y axis. On. Square. And use a marker to mark it. Okay. Now I'm just going to have to verify that the center of that mark is going to be. It's going to be off to the left a little bit. I couldn't get that in there, right? Punch that in there. Take my drill. Move it over a little bit so you can see what I'm doing over here. just like all the other ones. So, the motor's gonna go over here. We're gonna have some bearings for the belts over here. And I believe the way the belt goes, if I remember correctly, it comes over here to this one, over here to this one, and over to the middle, and then over to the carriage. And this one here will go up and around and over to the carriage that way. I'm pretty sure it's how the belts work, if I remember. That will be one of the later videos once I get the next carriage picked out, because I'm not going to, probably going to use a direct drive on this one, just because I like the direct drive system. Now, I've also been using some Loctite to lock everything in place. If I can get my washer. So just take the bolt, put a washer on it, take my Loctite, put a little dab of Loctite on the tip. You don't need it all the way over, like you don't need to smear it all over. A little bit's good. I use my fingers to get it started. And once it's started, you gotta make sure you don't strip these holes. This is probably the hardest one to get in. There's not a whole lot of room. You know what? I'm gonna take this all apart and then put that in on this part here. I'm just gonna take this screw out, get this started and tight, and then put it back in. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, so I'm gonna get this one started. Get it nice in there and it should get tight. There we go, nice and tight. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide it back in. And if you look, you can see the holes match up. You can kinda see it, it's kinda far away. And then I'm gonna try to put the screw back in. Now I'm gonna hold it like this and then get my Allen wrench. Up right here. And we're gonna put, oh, there it is. Let me start that one back up again. For some reason, my screw does not want to start today. Let's 
Let's try to help it out here. There we go. Here we go. Ahead. All right, so it's started now. Just tighten it up. I don't know if you can see that. Kind of a bad angle. Get the screw started in there. I'll finish tightening this up. And then what we're gonna do is like I did over there. Just put an angle bracket inside to try to square everything up. And then over there, I also put a straight bracket, like this one. Hang on, let me get it. And they're stuck together. There's two of them there. But uh, if you put one of these on the outside, I might put them all the way around on the outside. I got enough of them to do it, but I'm not sure if one is going to, because it seemed like it got pretty sturdy. I didn't really need to put it on. But we'll see. Maybe I will, maybe I will. The more rigid it is, the better. In my opinion. So the next step here is to make sure we are square. Oh, and that's here. There we go. Let me try again. Make sure we're square. Oh, we're gonna need one of these to make it square. Okay, so I'm gonna hold my triangle up against this. I'm gonna punch a hole in here. Now, huh, I'm gonna have to take a screw out in order to get to this. I don't think my drill is going to like drilling a hole that close. Actually, yeah, I might do it. Yeah, I should do it. Okay. I'm just going to tap the two holes. This one I'm gonna see this bar slides to the ends too. You can also do it in the middle. I'm gonna tap these holes. And I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm back. And I'm gonna be putting the last bits of screws in here. Now one thing to keep in mind is that when you are doing this, don't just mark all your holes and start drilling without putting things together because things might change. Uh, I like to work at it slowly just so I know everything's going to go together. Like I've had this part here together about six times now. Just to make sure all the holes are going to be in the right spot. I drill a couple holes, put stuff together, drill a couple more holes, and I just kept doing that just to make sure that all the brackets would be fitting in the right spot. So I didn't want to have to have all the holes drilled and then be just a tiny bit off. So what I would do is I just put some of these bolts in, just not tighten them all the way. So, almost done here. I'm just got a couple more bolts to put in. And the whole top part of this frame will be done. Uh, I'm going to mount... Ooh. forgot to put that in there. Let's see if I can do it quick. Put that in. Mm, it's not. Alright, so i got to take this part out. It's one of the things when you're in a hurry, you tend to make a mistake and forget something. So, let's see if we can get this in there without taking that screw all the way out, maybe. There we go. 
go. There we go. Everything fits. Did that with the other foot as well. I forgot to put that, that rod in. So I had to take it apart and put it back together. But I had all the Loctite on them and they had dried already at that point. So it made it very, very difficult. Now, this may not be a little difficult to put in. Put a whole lot of room in there. Uh, I'll just try my best to get it in. I want to make sure I put Loctite on these because I don't want everything coming apart. The old net 8 frame tends to fall apart when I was doing it. I actually put it all back together twice because the screws kept falling out. Reprinting and then all of a sudden one day, find a screw. Alright, I'll be right back once I get this screw in. Okay, I'm back. Get that screw in. Uh, just got a couple more screws to get in here. Uh, four total, and then this whole top part will be done. Uh, that one just, I don't know, it just didn't want to start. Kind of had to fiddle with it a little bit to get the start. But, pretty sure the old NAD8 board got burnt out when I accidentally wired it backwards. Uh, I saw a proof of smoke coming from a stepper motor, which I thought a little odd. I thought it would come from a 5 volt regulator before a stepper motor. But maybe it's because the 12 volts goes directly to the stepper motors. Maybe it's because the motors are 12 volts, maybe. I don't know. Why. I don't know. Maybe it was just easier for it to burn out the stepper motor than the 5 volt regulator. was burnt out I'll be looking to replace it not sure exactly what I'm gonna do yet this project's gonna go pretty slow because I have a lot of stuff to do in the next coming months I won't have as much time to put towards this but when I do get time I'll do some progress work on it I'll just do some work on it and film what I've done, just an explanation of what I've done so far, I'm not actually filming exactly how to do it, I'll explain it, but it's kind of hard when you're coming to it every couple days. Overall I think this is coming together pretty well. My biggest 3D printer. Exciting. And the biggest one will be one that I built. And hopefully everything works well on it. Once you get all the electronics together. Uh, not just too worried about the stepper motors, they should work fine. They work fine beforehand. They shouldn't have any problem now. Just worry about uh, Changing settings in the firmware, so I might have to change a lot of settings. Uh, the Z travel will be inverted from what it was. Um, I think that should be about it. Plus the bed size will have to be changed. Other than that, there shouldn't be too much work that needs to be done with that. Try to put a different display than what this one had. Put the old and A that had on it. We'll have to see how it works. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. If not, we can always just switch to a different type of display. I'll see what I'm doing to do that by if I on it. If that's what I end up doing, it'll take some more time than I originally planned. Because I need to 
save some money up to buy all that. Now, some of the legs probably bend in a little, but once I have the bars down at the bottom, let's just straighten it out. Uh, we can check to see how square we are. A little far off, so when I put the pieces in down here, that should straighten that all out. But, show you around a little bit. See here the linear rails, the not linear rail, yeah, linear smooth rails and the dry line bearings. They move pretty good. Got one on each side so far. Slides pretty good. And I have the pieces that are going to go around here to hold it in. And then we're going to have the other smooth rods. There's going to be two of them going to the top here holes. Uh, so far that's where we got in the project. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you want to be notified for future videos, hit subscribe. And I'll see you all next time.